the show's theme is revealed. I think my phone is going sideways. Okay. <clears throat> Great British Bake Off sounds generic, if I'm honest. I mean, you could watch cooking competitions where the titles contain allusions to decapitation, hellfire, robotic chefs. I get it. The prospect of watching some Europeans in a tent baking bread for two or three hours seems unappealing. It's worth it, though. And they do edit it pretty heavily if you're worried about time. It's not the high-octane, balls-to-the-wall nonsense of those other shows, but it's a damn interesting show. The Great British Bake Off is a show about baking where 12 of the best European amateur bakers go into a tent to, well, bake. Each week, one participant is eliminated, and this continues until there are three bakers left, at which point one person will be named the Grand Champion. It sounds pretty bog standard, but there is something distinct about this show. It's compassionate. The hosts, judges, cameras, and production all serve to show each baker, warts and all. We watch each participant complete the challenges given to them, for better or worse, and then we watch as the cast becomes smaller. Love Productions, the company responsible for the Great British Bake Off, recognizes that the bakers are what make the show great. They gather a cast each season that is diverse, interesting, and talented, and they treat that cast with respect. In return, the cast treats each other with respect. Participants often befriend each other as the show carries on. Now, at this point, I think I have to mention why this is so significant. A compassionate game, like the Great British Bake Off, is significant because we don't see compassion in other shows of its kind. Competitive cooking shows are usually about proving who's the best. The judges are cold and critical, and that's intentional, because competition is about determining a winner, and not about making friends. But, to be honest, I don't care about how amazing Joe Superchef is, or how terrible he thinks some chef's paella is. I don't want to see some loudmouth chef scream obscenities at people who are undertrained. I want to see Sue Perkins tell bakers who are having a rough go that everything's going to be fine. I'd rather watch Paul Hollywood explain, thoughtfully, how to improve someone's bake. I'd rather see Prue make at least 100 jokes about how much she enjoys the alcohol level in someone's bake. I don't give a shit about ego at all. I want to see compassion. To me, compassion is beautiful, and we don't have enough of it in games or on TV. Let's talk about the format, because I think that's how the Great British Bake Off has remained so solid, even through staff changes. I think the format and the mechanics therein are where the humanity in this show resides. Here's a walkthrough of how each show goes. Now, I'm sorry, but I have to do this thing with some fairly technical description. I'll try to lighten it, but I fear your eyes may roll into the back of your head anyway. This is just the setup, though, and I assure you it will get more cheery once we break through this stuff. Please stay with me. Onwards. The show starts with a silly bit with the hosts, and sometimes the judges. This lightens things up a bit, I think. After the title sequence, the show's theme is revealed. Bread week, spice week, patisserie week, etc. Round one is called the Signature Challenge, and requires the bacon... bacons the bakers to make something simple in their own unique way, like biscuits or baklava. Once the bakers get to work, each of them is given time in front of the camera. Bakers use this time to explain their techniques and rationale. The judges come around to most tables to talk about what each baker is working on and asks them questions about progress, time, or technique. The hosts visit the bakers' benches as well. They provide moral support, hugs, congratulations, jokes, and sometimes even help bakers finish up. And, if that wasn't enough focus on the bakers, a small vignette is shown for each baker explaining their background, their lives outside of baking, inspirations for the bake of that day, and even interviews with family and friends. All of this serves to get the viewer invested in the bakers, to understand them, and maybe even to start to like them. After the bake is over, the judges walk to each table to critique the bakes. They provide advice on how the bake could be better and actually explain what went wrong if it's applicable. Judging in this round is more intimate and therefore less intimidating, so the bakers can be more candid and honest. Critiques can be harsh, but are never insulting and hardly ever subjective, because the judges are there to judge the bakes, but also to help the bakers become better at what they do. One of the hosts is usually there as well, to keep things light. They taste the bakes, they ask the chefs and judges to explain things, they even provide some banter and jokes. It's nice. The second round is known as the technical challenge. The judges critique these dishes blindly, so they give a bit of advice, and then they shove off. The hosts then announce what needs to be made, and they start the challenge. 
The bake is usually something that requires significant technical know-how and or is something most bakers will not be familiar with making. Each baker is given the required ingredients and a terse version of the recipe. Terse in this case means not terribly specific. Editing in this round is a bit more tense. There's a bit where the two judges are sitting in another room in the tent explaining what the thing is and why it was chosen. Otherwise, the whole of this segment is about showing the bakers figuring out how to make the damn thing. Hosts help where they can, but usually they're less familiar with the recipe than the bakers. There's a lot of hand-wringing, worrying, head-scratching, and redoing. This is where we really connect with the bakers. We get to see them struggle, that is, if we haven't already. Once the challenge is over, each bake is put on the gingham altar for judging. The judges evaluate each individual bake based on what they expect from the recipe. Then they rank all the bakes from bottom to top. As they evaluate the bakes, and again as they're presenting the ranked lists, the judges explain what went wrong and what didn't work. Winning the technical is kind of a big deal, and it's the first chance for the bakers to see how well the other bakers might be doing. The show breaks for a moment while the judges and hosts sit down in a private room to discuss how well each baker is doing. This gives us an insight into who might be leaving and who might get Star Baker at week's end. Oh yeah, someone is awarded the title of Star Baker, which basically means you killed it this weekend. Then, the final round the showstopper challenge. Again, the bakers are given a particular challenge which they can develop as they wish. Usually it's something elaborate, but not as difficult as the technical. The hosts explain what is to be made, what the judges are expecting, and how long they have to do it. Then... On your mark. On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Bake. 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 <clears throat> Filming for this round is similar to the first round. The judges and hosts visit each bench, the cameras follow the bakers as they explain and perform the tasks that they have laid out, and there are produced vignettes about each baker, usually of the bakers who didn't get one in the first round. Use of a variety of techniques is preferred, so the tension isn't dissimilar from the technical. In a way, the showstopper combines the most difficult bits from the two previous rounds into something even more severe. Once the challenge has finished, judging takes place. The judges have a table in front of all the baking stations, and each baker has to bring their finished product up to the front. The judges, for one final time, judge the bakes and explain how the bakers succeeded and how they failed. They explain how things could have been better, they critique the bake in a friendly way, and move on to the next bake. Once judging is finished, all the bakers are gathered in a line to find out who will be star baker, and who will leave the tent. The hosts trade off each week as to who will announce each. The Star Baker announcement is cheerful and happy. Congratulations are shared with the hosts, the judges, and even fellow participants. Announcing who will leave the tent is sad, and the host often bespeaks how sorry they are that the person is leaving, no matter how long they've been in the tent. The person leaving the tent gets hugs all around and kind words from the judges. Star Baker gets handshakes and congratulations. The whole scene is interrupted by interviews with the baker who won Star Baker, the baker who left, and usually other bakers who may have been in line for either position. The show ends often with some more kind words from the judges and cut to black. Let's zoom in a bit and determine how this format supports compassion. Let's do that by picking out some of the mechanics and determining what is compassionate about them. The biggest thing here is how the hosts act toward the contestants. Other competitive shows, the hosts rarely interact with the competitors. And if they do, it's to extract information. What are you doing? What are you making? What are the ingredients you're using? The hosts here do that a little, but it's with genuine interest. When a host comes up and asks a baker questions, it's clear they aren't doing it for the sake of the show. They're doing it because they want to know. When a baker is getting nervous or overwhelmed, hosts will come and support them however they can. And sometimes that means they help with the bake. All right, hold on. I have a feeling I know what you're about to say. To the untrained eye, this might be construed as cheating. And maybe it is. But then again, maybe that's because we've been trained to think that any minor transgression is means for disqualification. That's pretty harsh, though. Of course, people who break the rules solely for an advantage should be reprimanded. But sometimes people break the rules for other reasons. And that brings me to the next mechanic. Fuzzy rules. Great British Bake Off has rules. I assume. But occasionally the hosts the judges, and even the bakers will violate these rules without consequence. Bakers have helped other bakers in a pinch. Hosts have messed with bakers' workstations for the sake of comedy or just to taste what they're making. Judges have decided not to eliminate someone at the end of an episode. Sometimes people f*** up, or extenuating circumstances occur and decisions have to be made. 
Fuzzy rules allow for adjustments to be made on the fly, while still retaining the general integrity of the game. I like to think of it like when you play a board game with friends or family who just want to chill out. Others are willing to relax the rules because having fun is more important than stickling. Which sort of brings me to my next mechanic, judges with multiple hats. Not actual physical hats. <laughs> Mary Berry has published 75 books, the first being in 1970. Paul Hollywood has worked in bakeries since he was a teenager and served as head baker at a number of restaurants. Prue Leith is a restaurateur, chef, caterer, television presenter, businesswoman, journalist, cookery writer, and novelist. The judges know what they're doing. They judge, sure, that job is in the name, but they also teach. They explain how each baker can make their bakes better while they're judging. They also learn from the bakers. On several occasions, the judges commented they would try techniques and flavors that bakers had used. The judges act honestly more like peers. They're interested in what the bakers are doing and seem sincerely interested in helping participants where possible. And while we're talking about the judges, how about that point system? I mean, that there isn't one. Not an explicit one, anyway. The judges are consistently changing who might win or lose with each challenge. Bakers have earned Star Baker, or at least been in line for it, after bombing any of the individual challenges. And a few times after bombing two of them. You can call it subjective, but the fact is that sometimes bakers will redeem themselves so gloriously that they still come out on top. Or how about bakers who have horrible presentation, but excellent flavors. That sort of thing might result in scathing remarks in any other cooking competition, but not on Gabibo. I like that one. Flavors are king, and you might even get high praise for an undercooked mess if it tastes good. Mechanics I've talked about thus far explain how judges, hosts, and bakers have the ability to be compassionate towards each other. There's another mechanic to consider, the presentation. GBBO is edited such that the viewer, that's us, by the way, is a part of everyone's process. The vignettes show us how the bakers got invited to the tent and what their inspirations are. The interactions with hosts, judges, and camera show us not only what they're doing, but also how they're doing. We see all of their joy, their sadness, their disappointment, their vulnerability. By giving us full access to the individual, as opposed to, say, leaving all the talking to the judges or the hosts, as is often done in other cooking competitions, we get to experience the bakes in a way that we can empathize with. Earlier, I alluded to the fact that some of these things can be expressed when playing board games. Sometimes compassionate play mechanics are built into the rules. For example, how a game master functions in a D&D &D campaign. But often we employ house rules or exceptions because everyone around the table is human. Probably humans we care about and empathize with. It can be gratifying to allow your fellow player some leeway because you feel bad for their string of luck, or maybe because they misunderstood the rules. It seems when someone deems something a competition, it's like the serious switch gets turned on. We don't care about the participants, only about their performance. We don't care about their stress levels or their inspiration. We only want to know who is the best. We do not care about the process. We only care about who wins. Or at least that's how cooking competitions are typically produced. But the truth is that these folks are interesting, even the people who lose. And I would love to see more of the journey and less of the grandstanding egoism. And not just on cooking shows, in role-playing games, in dinosaur movies, in YouTube makeup tutorials, in Twitch streams of body painting. I want to know about the person I'm watching do the thing. Whatever that thing is. In one of the final episodes of the travel slash food show, Parts Unknown, Anthony Bourdain tools around Hong Kong with the cinematographer of his favorite films, Chris Doyle. When asked about what he looks at when filming, Doyle explains he looks at the people. And then back, back. We're doing something which all of those energies focus in a way that somehow connects with other people. Hello, what do you want in life? And that's it. When we get into the minds and hearts of others, we can see what's interesting about them. As creative people, we just need to consider how we present the humans slash characters that we're focused on. A lot of the mechanics I've discussed in this session are about showcasing humanity. It can be a little too easy to erase humanity for the sake of making something cool or appeasing a mainstream audience, whatever the f*** that is. But when we see humans being kind to other humans, or humans being vulnerable around one another, it's easier to understand others in our own day-to-day -day lives. This ending took a wide turn away from compassionate gaming. Just use the sh 
that I just talked about in your games. I think it would be really cool if you did that. Okay? Cheers.